Hello, I'm Josh Skinner with uh, Tony and Grammy Award winner Stephen Sater from Spring Awakening. Stephen, thank you so much for letting me come into your house sure, and sure. interview you. you do? My garage. Oh, your garage. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. also your office. <laughs> yeah. It looks great. You've been yeah. busy. Yeah. Um, before I get started, I just want to let you know that every question I will be asking you was sent to me by your fans through Twitter. So sweet. Yeah, you've got a lot of fans <laughs> throughout the world. So uh, I want to first obviously talk about Spring Awakening. Uh, it originally was a play in 1891. It was banned in Germany because um, of the subject matter. They talked about abortion and um, rape and mm -hmm. child abuse. I was wondering, um, you know, over 100 years later, what drew you to this project that you wanted to turn into a rock musical that would then get uh, 11 Antonio nominations and win eight of them. How, how did what, that happen? How did it happen? Um, you know, I met Duncan and I started writing songs with Duncan and it was such a joy for me. I had never written lyrics and I was enjoying it so much and he said we'd do an album and I thought well we should do more than an album. I wanted to keep writing songs and um, I mean that's kind of the truth and I, I thought well I, I come from theater. Right. I've been in theater and um, I said I said to him we should create a piece of musical theater together and he made this face like musical theater the music in musical theater the problem with it is it's only relevant to the music in other musical theater and I said you mean you want to create something where the music was relevant to the culture at large he said, exactly, people our age. And the moment he said it, mind you, this was 10 years ago, <laughs> but the moment he said it, I just had this intuition spring awakening. It was, I can't really explain it other than it, it just came up from within the depth of my heart. I just, I, it was a play I knew and loved. I'd known it when I was a kid. I was later able to make sense of it to myself by thinking that um, the original play is so full of the yearning and anguish and exhilaration of being young and the, that it struck me that the place that young people for the past generations have found release from and expression of those same longings has been through rock music. Mm. So it seemed like a great fit. It just was like an instinct that I had to create this thing. Now what was your teen years like? I mean, did you incorporate your own teenage experiences into Spring Awakening or did you feel like you were the voice of teenagers everywhere. I mean, that's a huge undertaking. Well, I, you know, I made a determination in the wake of the shootings at Columbine in the spring of, of 1999 to touch the troubled heart of youth around the world. Right. And um, so that was my determination with the piece. I mean, I do think that none of us ever really escapes the experience we've had of adolescence. And mine, you know, how what was my what were my teen years like? They were not good. <laughs> was, was not happy. But I was a sick kid. I missed a lot of school. I mean, I was like had bronchial problems, and I was in and out of school a lot. And then high school. In fact, I actually had a, a lot of joy in high school, and I discovered theater. But I knew this play from high school too. Um, I had read it on my own in the library, and um, I don't know. It just seemed like such a profound vehicle for you know something. And, and I could hear Duncan's music in the play, in the original play. I have to say we transformed the original play dramatically. Right. I think the greatest critical misperception of our show is that we took this original play and added songs to it. In fact, what you're seeing is our version of Vatican's play. You know, it's our, our we're creating something for a modern audience always. Hmm. You know what I mean? Now you're a father of teenagers, so I was wondering, when you're watching your show and you're speaking for the, the voice of a new generation, does it influence the way that you parent, or you know, or does it That's make you so closer, closer to your kids, or because how old are your kids? I, you want to say this online? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, we don't <laughs> have to. We can. Yeah. Okay. We can. Okay. <laughs> they're growing up. Yeah. They're, they're my my daughter's about to enter high school. Okay. Um, the um, I don't know if it makes me a better dad. I think that. I was away so much as a dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my first success, and we were living in New York, and I had my first success in film and TV, and I was in L.A. all the time. And then we moved to L.A., and then Spring Awakening happened, and I was in New York. Mm -hmm. And I think with the success of the show, it really meant a lot to my kids. I know this is a weird way of answering your question, but it meant a lot to my kids, because it kind of made sense of where I had been right. in some way. But um, I don't know that it's made me a better parent, but I, I do think that everyone who watch of a certain age who watches the show, I think everyone who watches Spring Awakening kind of remembers what it's like to be an adolescent. They feel that. 
And so that's open doors, it's open empathy between generations, because parents remember what it's like to be young. But I also think you have a kind of double experience of it when you're a parent, because you're sort of experiencing it as an adolescent, and then you realize, oh no, wait, I'm one of those awful grown-ups. Okay. You know, and so, that yeah. I, so I, too, in watching it, will remember conversations I've had with my son about his report card, or, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's made me a better parent. My son still tells stories, and his friends, of when... I was at my Buddhist altar chanting, and I turned to him and his friends and said, so what would you guys consider the bitch of living? Right. <laughs> and, and they had nothing to say. They had nothing to offer. They thought I was out of my mind. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, you're a cool dad in my eyes. The fact that you can be like, hey, what's the bitch of living? Or, well, let's talk, there's two things I want to touch on. Number one, let's talk about uh, the bitch of living. And I want to touch upon uh, totally fucked. Like, you know, how do you, how do you come up with that? And to have lyrics that just say blah, 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 blah. Like, what was going through your mind? Were, were you chanting at the time, or were when you... I wrote that? Yeah, um, I don't know. You know, I, I might have been. Okay. But um, but I can say that I looked at the. You know, I was just looking at the story, and it was Moritz. We needed a song for Moritz to talk about the anguish of his life and being. To me, that I guess this does involve what I felt as a kid. I felt, I mean, maybe, and maybe because I was sick, I felt so imprisoned in my body. That's what I always felt. And then his body's undergoing puberty. It's like he's just trapped. He can't get out of it. He's dreaming about it. And I just thought, well, what is that? You know what I mean? And it just seemed like it's the bitch of living. You know, just sort of being alive is, is you know, he says, it's the bitch of living as someone you can't stand. I mean, he's got this loathing, you know, for himself. And yet he's turned on and trying to make sense of life. I don't know. It had to be a song that, would pertain for the other boys as well, and something that would reach all of us. I don't know, I just think we've all felt the bitch of living. Mm. You know what I mean? I, um, I can say that these ideas come to me, they don't come separately from a kind of musical idea. I kind of hear them as a song in my mind when I write it. And I write a very complete lyric that I give to Duncan. He gets a kind of complete lyric, and the magic of our relationship is that 97% of the time he just sets it verbatim. So when I first gave him the lyric, for example, of totally fucked it had, blah, 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 you know, the same number of blahs, you know, and he, he sets them, it's kind of magical. The same thing in, in Left Behind, the ooh, oohs and mm -hmm. the oohs. But totally fucked, that, um, well, we were, we were writing <laughs> a story it. where, um, you know, we had this 19th century frame, and they were, they were going to burst the frame and become contemporary kids in that situation. And here was Melchior standing there with, all this accusation going down on him, you know, and you did this and you did this, and he has no opportunity to defend himself, he has no opportunity to speak, and I guess, I don't know, I guess I just reach into my heart and it's like, what is that feeling? And it's like being totally fucked. Mm -hmm. It's just like, just sort of comes out, you know, I don't really, I don't know, I have the ideas and then, I remember very clearly bringing the lyric in, bringing the lyric to Duncan, and it so happened, and this was rare, that that, that day, because usually I just give things to Duncan, but that day um, Michael was there too, our director, mm -hmm. happened to be there, and I remember everyone looking at the lyric and wow, was, wow, this could be exciting, and Duncan pulled out his guitar and just start, and sort of did it. He sort of did the first line right there for us. There's a moment you know, and he looked up and said, you're fucked. So, I don't know, that was in 1999. Do you ever hear melodies or just lyrics? I always hear the lyrics come to melodies, unlike the way I write poetry, for example, which is just like kind of the mind in conversation with itself. However, I never um, set that melody down, and I don't think it's useful or good. I don't think I'm a composer by nature. But I do hear the... Maybe it's why... Duncan said to me from the very beginning when I gave him lyrics, and still when I give him lyrics, he says that your words suggest melodies. Mm. But I don't really say anything. I don't try and convey anything to him about the melody. I will say, the sort of thing I can say to him, and I might have said it about Total Fuck or something else, is we need a number here that's high energy. Right. Or we need a big group number, or or this can be, we, we both love ballads more than anything, so it's like, okay, the, this, we can write this as a ballad. I'll say that kind of thing if it's for a show. If it's for his record, I don't say anything at all. But if it's for the show, I will say something like that. Or the girls sing this when, I'll tell them the moment of the story and the moment of the character. But I don't, all the music comes from him.